Welcome to Backbeat Vintage. I'm EJ. In this video we're going to look at the Epiphone Viola. I've received a lot of emails and comments from people asking me what I thought of it and have I ever worked on one and uh, do I have any suggestions for upgrades, stuff like that. So I thought in this video let's dig into one and just check it As out. As we get into this I think I should kind of preface this with something that I have stated before. I'm a big Epiphone fan. If you've seen any of my jam sessions, you've seen me play with my standard Les Paul Epiphone and also my um, Inspired by John Lennon Epiphone. Um, the one thing that I like about the Epiphone series, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Gibson guitars. I think they're one of the ones that are rock solid, intonation, everything about them, I just love them. But for me to um, have a Hofner collection like I do and play guitar from time to time, um, it's better for me to get into the Epiphone series because I think the quality is superb and the sound is right there also. And I can take the guitar to the next level because I'll do my own luthier work on it, setting it up and stuff like that. So it's important for me to say that because I feel that Along with um, what I had to do for the Epiphone series, setting them up myself, I'm going to do the same here on this viola. Um, I'm going to look it over and um, probably set it up the way I want it to sound, the way I want it to play. Um, so, but anyway, let's get into it. I thought we'd start off by just kind of doing a general once over on this guitar. And just kind of point out a few things. It has the tailpiece that um, is somewhat adjustable. It has a very similar to the Hofner type bridge. It says it's rosewood, but I'm not so sure. I mean, I'm sure it is, but it um, seems kind of thin to me for some reason. I'm going to check that out. It has two volume knobs and a tone. And there were some Hofners built this way too. I think it was in the mid to late 60s, uh, possibly early 70s, where they had this setup. But they usually didn't have the plate. They were just directly into the body. This is a maple body, maple back and sides, flamed. It's got a really nice finish on it. Looks like it's um, polyurethane. Very similar to the... Um, um, Hofner pickup, the one that's adjustable here up and down on the side. Nice flame to it. It's kind of a little too red for me, but it's very nice. Very similar binding to the Hofner. And on the back here, same thing. Flamed maple, flamed um, split grain. Um, and the neck too. It, the neck is very much like um, after 1970 uh, when Hofner was doing this type of a heel. You can see the burst on the neck too and the keys. Let me flip this back over. There's one thing that I do like very much about this right off the bat and that is the neck. The neck, this being a short scale base, 30.5 inches, it's a half inch longer than the Hofners that we're all used to, but it does have the zero fret. And I did like the um, the um, first uh, fret on here and compared it to one of the Hofners I have and it's very very close. Very very nice. I wish this neck was on the ignition Hofner. The ignition somehow or other ended up with a very wide neck. But this feels very much like a Hofner neck. And the frets aren't too big. You know they're a nice size. Um, up here this is where I start to question this. I don't understand why such a heavy duty key, tuner key is needed here. Very nice headstock, very nice the way they do this. It's the same way with this uh, new uh, snipped corners on the open book. I like that very much. So um, I'm going to um, start looking into a few things here. And any improvements I do, obviously, guys, you know, I mean, all my parts are Hofner parts, so that's all I have to pick from. The first thing, though, that I'd have to say that I've noticed with this is that it's extremely heavy. And there is no center block in here. 
this is a you know hollow body I do know that there is one square block right underneath the bridge that drops down to the back and that's pretty common although Hofner doesn't do that so um, I'll get into this and show that but I the one thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and start stripping this down and just kind of reverse engineer this a little bit and look at what they're doing but I'm trying to figure out where all the weight is coming from now I know on a Hofner it's a spruce top and this is a maple top but let's look inside this thing and see what's going on it's got a lot of weight to it so I wanted to um, mic this for you I'm going to mic it from the zero fret width not the nut because um, I want to be consistent so um, as I'm looking at this right at the zero fret it is 1 in 19 30 seconds in width here on our 1966 vintage Hofner at the zero fret it too mics exactly 1 in 19 30 seconds the difference is when you get up here at the 12th fret it's different at the 12th fret it is measuring it mics out to be 1 in 59 60 fourths and on the vintage base it mics out to be 1 in 53 60 fourths so what we have here is a very similar to Hofner sized neck it does get a little bit wider up here than the Hofner but it's very nice again I'd have to say this would have been the perfect neck for the ignition Hofner um, version that is the competition to this one so we just spoke about the neck and I'm really impressed with the neck I think this is a great neck I really do um, the zero fret the uh, very narrow um, the narrowness of it all the way up everything but the real question I'm coming up with right now is why is this so heavy just jumping on a scale with this this seems to be approximately six and a half pounds and I grabbed my um, my 62 German Hofner because it's hollow inside it's not doesn't have a center block and that's roughly around four and a half pounds so I'm a little bit miffed as to why this is so heavy although I do know it's a, a maple top I'm sure it's a ply but um, that makes me even more curious to see and get inside this thing and um, check it out but before we do that I'm going to fire it up and with my uh, vintage amp and uh, play it with the tone a little bit see what we get okay to do this I have this plugged into my vintage AC 50 foundation base amp uh, 1965 I have no compression on and I'm just gonna play the G string because I believe that that records better uh, than the lower notes do for something like this so as we said down here we have two volumes and a one tone a volume for each pickup and a tone the way this apparently works is the volume uh, when turned off or back here turned up is the neck one right here and the tone works with that without the uh, bridge pickup on here it is toned all all muffled here we go rolling it back to the brightest that the um, neck pickup can be I'll turn that off I'm going to um, turn on the um, bridge pickup full power I'm going to roll the tone as bright as it can get as muffled also when you have both pickups on interestingly enough both volumes turned up the tone works for that too Yeah, it's got a lot of punch a lot of power I'm kind of interested to see what the pickups read they're obviously humbuckers and um, I'm kind of curious again to see what um, pots they're using I can almost bet right now that these are 500 K uh, so um, let's keep moving okay so we're at the stage now where I'm going to start taking things off for this base
Okay, here's something I found out right away. As soon as I took the last string off, this tailpiece just fell off right out of the bracket. So if that was just floating in there, believe it or not, that being that loose has a lot to do with something holding its tuning. So this has me concerned right here. Um, it just literally fell off. And the other thing is I'm going to try to hold this up to the camera here and see if I can show you. When I was talking about the bridge, it seems just really weak to me. I can, I can flex it. And when I look at the grain of the rosewood versus a Hofner one, you can see it's almost like, it almost looks like a mahogany. And you know, on the guitars that I've worked on where I've done mahogany and I had to use a grain filler, this looks like what it would look like if you didn't use a grain filler, where the Hofner one is a solid. So um, I'm questioning this and it's extremely light. Okay, so I just took all the tuners off. These are the tuners I was talking about. They're pretty much for full size bass, you know, for the full length string. Heavy duty, very heavy compared to relative to what Hofner normally uses. Big difference in weight right there. And just taking that off of the bass at this point, I can already feel a little bit of difference. It seems very light now on this end. So I think we're heading in the right direction here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the pickups out of this. But first I want to show you these screws here. They look like oh, possibly number five screws. Very big. They're oval head. And I'm just wondering why they didn't just use a small flat black screw so that that didn't look so industrial. That's something I'm going to change. But so far, it's looking pretty solid. I just got done talking about the bridge here. I want to show you here where the bridge was sitting on the body. Do you see this indentation? Then nothing. And then indentation here. So this bridge was had about just a little bit of the tip on each side transferring sound into the sound box here. That's a bad connection. I want to share this with you. I was able to pull this out as one unit. Basically undid the big huge screws they had, dropped it down into the body, undid it, dropped it down into the body, unscrewed this. And by the way, when I was doing the test, this was cutting in and out. And I was absolutely correct on here. These are, um, I don't know if you can see it on there, but says 500k. You put a 500k um, pot in a guitar if you want to brighten it up somewhat. And again, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to try to pull this into the tone that I prefer. I'm sure even after I get done doing what I'm going to do to try to get it as close as possible to what I like, it'll still have its own unique sound because it is not a Hofner. And I also want you to know that I weighed it. At this point right here, with everything stripped off of it, it is at 4.8 pounds. One more small FYI here. This appears to be a three-ply laminate plywood. And right here is a piece of a Hofner that I had. And you can see where it's actually five. But they are the same thickness. So the Hofner would be much, much stronger. So the output for the pickups seemed to be right around 535 for um, the neck and 540, 542 for the bridge. That's not bad. That's pretty much a vintage spec. Okay, so we've had this conversation before in some of the other videos, but um, let's review it here in this video. You know, we have the sound box, we have a good connection at the neck. We want everything to be solid so that when we put a nice string on here and set all this up and we pluck the string, we get a nice acoustic sound, which then also helps with the electronic sound going out through the amp. So we get those nice, all the tone we possibly can. So we have a nice tight joint here. We've already discovered that the tailpiece has basically fell off when I unscrewed it in two pieces. Not good. Um, the um, 
we looked at where the bridge sat we could see it was really just pressing on the outer edges it wasn't sitting and I believe the wood was not a good connection as far as um, taking tone and resonating it from the string down through the wood into the wood of the body the box resulting in a nice sound. So up here um, I wanted to see what's going on here with the nut and when I took it off turned it over um, it's hollow. Now you can imagine with everything we're talking about here that that's not a good solid connection. What this calls for now is we're going to put a good nut back in. I here. wanted to point out to you that what I like here is that you know when you have a zero fret guitar your zero fret is always higher than the actual frets themselves and they've done that here I think you can see that. Okay I've got no pressure on the neck now the strings or I should say tension and I've tried to readjust this to be absolutely flat. It's in great shape. I'm using my trusty straight edge um, that I have marked as to which edge I always use. I lay it right on the center of the neck. And what I'm looking for is to see if we have any highs or lows here that need to be leveled. Um, and I can slip this piece of paper right in. And when I hit the G fret, I can't get past it. G sharp, A. A sharp B. I can get it back in at the B and it, I can move it along no problem at all until I hit up here to the last three or four frets. So basically what we've got going on is right in here and here I have highs or we could say that these are low but the reality is these are high. So we do need just a little bit of adjusting here but not bad, not what I have seen in the past on other guitars in this price range. So um, we will be doing in the future some leveling and then obviously some recrowning. Looking good so far. So guys, I wanted to get back to you on this. Um, I keep referencing the fact that this guitar seems very heavy to me. And taking a closer look at it, um, what I've discovered is is that the body, the way it is made, and there's nothing wrong with this, but um, it's going to require me to compare it to a German Hofner. You know, I've already showed you this piece of wood. This is actually a piece of uh, a German Hofner, and I'm using it to show you the different plies. Why that's important is on those types of bases, which these are all, uh, um, you know, they're copying it somewhat calling it the beetle base, is that Hofner then, once they make their ply, they then shape it this way and mold it. So this is the thickness of the body. And they put blocks in the corners and stuff like that. Very, very lightweight, but very strong. In the case of this guitar, they're using plywood this thick, okay? And they're not curving it like we're talking about, like Hofner does. What they've done is they've laid it down put a second piece behind it to get us the thickness of the body. Now it's a big flat piece of plywood and they've cut, at, cut it out. They've cut the shape out. So it's actually going uh, 45 degrees different than a Hofner. So what happens here is we've got a lot more thickness in wood and as we all know plywood is also has a lot of glue in it. So I don't think there's much more that I can do to lighten this up other than to just continue on doing what I'm doing. And let's see how this resonates. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that my casino and a few others are built that way too. And I have no issues with that. But when we compare it to a Hofner, I would then feel more comfortable saying that the body on this guitar, this um, viola, is a chambered body. So um, let's continue on and let's see what kind of sound or tone we get out of this. So on a lot of my other videos, you guys have seen me do this before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I do want to explain it to maybe some of the newer viewers that haven't seen those. Um, we just talked that there are some high spots in the neck, and what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've using a low tack tape, I have taped off the neck. I'm going to cover up the body and protect that, stay away from the zero fret, and then what I do is I take my blue marker and I go on the frets all the way up. 
I put bluing on them. And then once I have them nice and solid blue, I take my leveling bar. This is a Stumac bar. Now I want to explain something to you. Uh, a few of people have gotten a hold of me and have um, referenced this or talked about a um, the sanding block for the curvature of the neck. That's not what this is. This is an absolutely flat bar, perfectly flat, straight. Okay. We don't really want to use the curve because that is for what you would use on the neck wood prior to fretting. Okay. You can use it over the frets just if you want lightly. But in this case, what we're concerned with is from string to bridge in an absolutely straight line because that is where the string is going to be played. That's where we're concerned about buzzing. So with this 400 grit paper that sticks on this bar that you buy, you then lay it on the neck and you go up and down. Not a whole lot of pressure, but you do it lightly the first time and then when you take it off and you can see the highs and the lows because you'll see shiny versus the blue. Now what I do, and once again I got to remind you that the neck has to be absolutely flat using your straight edge as best you can because most likely it's not totally flat. That's why we're doing this. And in some cases it might be from, because of wear marks. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to level this and once we're done with that we're going to crown them because now we've made those frets flat. So I'm going to use my Z file. It's a specially made file. I think you can see that. It's, we're going to put the crown back on there because, you know, we flattened the fret out. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recrown that and make each one of those a nice thin line so that our notes are perfectly, so we flattened it and now we're going to go ahead and put the crown back on. It won't be this sharp, maybe more like that. And right in here is where we're going to play those notes on those frets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, we'll see the results in the end. Also, when we're done, we're going to buff these up and I'll show you how I do that. Earlier on, we talked about the keys here being for a full-size bass and um, the strings that were on here were full-size strings, which meant that the gauge of the string was the fat all the way up. So it, it needed this, this larger groove and stuff like that and space to wrap that string around. But we're going to go to a short scale a string. I'm going to use the Labella Deep Talk and Bass String because I'm used to using that. Sometimes I use the pyramids. Again, you know, I'm a 100% Hoffner guy and I'm going to use parts here that I have to um, see what I can do with this viola. And it's a lighter gauge, which means, now here's the low E, and you can see the taper on the end of that. It doesn't need this big key. So we're going to use Hoffner keys. And I've gone ahead and done that and I'm going to explain to you how I converted this. Okay. You can see, you know, right, um, you know, you can see it just has like a guitar. It has a little hole and you know, that, that will work for what we're going to do here. Now let me explain what I did here. And while I'm here, I also want to show you that I did remove the name from here. I'm not big on that. Um, just something I used some 1500 grit paper to do. And you saw me pull the nut off and I'm putting a solid um, Hoffner nut on here and I'm going to regroove this and with um, the same exact string spacing. So um, let me turn this over and show you what the back side looks like and then I'll explain how I did this. Okay, here we have the back side. I did have to drill four new holes and um, I used the existing holes for the lower ones. I have other keys here, but these are the ones that seem to fit perfectly. So let me explain this to you. Once I had the key out, it left a 5 8 inch hole up here. They're quite large. And what we do with something like that is we dowel it, we plug it. So I have some dowel material, and this is one I, from another project. I just wanted to use it to show you. Basically, we would insert that into the hole and then drill down through the center the new, the new um, diameter. And in this case, I was able to um, use a ferrule or um, a bushing, if you will, that is the same size as the dowel, so it completely covered up 
what was there before. Nice, solid, tight connection. Nice adjusting keys. Um, this is going to work out fine. Okay, so I want to give you a close up here. I leveled the uh, frets, got all the low spots out or highs out, whatever. And um, after that, I took my 320 or 400 grit paper, just kind of went up and down the neck lightly to help get rid of some of the filing marks, which there should be very few of. Then I went to a 600 paper and kind of went up and down the neck, kind of buffed it up lightly. And then again, I took my uh, metal fret polish on a piece of leather. I've showed you this before in other videos, um, which is why I'm kind of going over this pretty quick. But this nice leather, and I've uh, put a little polish, work it into the cloth, and went all up and down the frets here. And I've got them looking really nice. And I know that um, we're not going to have any buzzing here due to uh, fret issues. Okay guys, we're at a point here where I want to kind of walk through some of the changes I've made and why and explain to you what our next step will be. Right now we're going after all of the tone acoustic things that we can adjust and um, try to get the most tone out of this as an acoustic bass. So let me walk you through some of these changes and keep in mind you know most of my parts I have here are Hofner parts and they seem to be perfect for what we're doing here where there were areas where I needed to swap things out. So um, let me show you that now and then we'll be right back. Okay let's quickly run down what we've done here. We've changed out the tuners, made adjustments to how they were installed. I removed viola, has nothing to do with tone, just my own preference. I did change out the nut. We had a plastic hollowed out uh, nut in here. The nut just um, even though the string sits on the zero fret, we we usually generally want to get as good connection here as possible because it does also sit on the nut. I did not put a bone nut in here because a bone nut would make it more troubling and that's not how we want to go with this bass. So I put a solid uh, Hofner, I believe it's a, some form of plastic in there. I still have to cut the, um, the uh, for the strings. And um, I uh, leveled and crowned and polished and oiled using my usual fretboard finishing oil from Stumac on the neck. Beautiful neck. Again, I really like the neck on this guitar. It's very nice. Down here on this end of the guitar, earlier on I had talked about how these were installed using these uh, number five oval screws looking a little rusty. It's not a very nice patina. So what I did was I used a um, satin black flat tapered screw and I took 1500 paper and I went around on the edges of these because it was very sharp and while I was doing it I also um, dulled it. 1500 grit on that and I did it on this one here too. Okay so the next thing that we see here is you know their bridge I'm, I'm not liking it. It's just too weak. And um, the obvious thing here to do would be to use one of the Hofner ones because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, down here we um, talked about the uh, tailpiece that was with this guitar. It was much shorter. By starting the string back here, by the time we got all the way up here, the, the um, silk winding wasn't getting past the nut. So to move that farther this way, you can see that the difference in length here is that this is about three quarters of an inch to an inch more that way, giving us the space we need up on the strings. Here um, on the original, they had the um, gold cap look like this. I'm not a, that's not my favorite cap. And they had copy on here that said tone, volume, volume, reading from the other direction. And what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to change the uh, capacitors to 250, I'm going to use these um, Hofner knobs that say volume, volume, tone on it. So again, I removed the copy. I'm changing it out with these. And also, I used a pinhead 
blade screw here instead of the, the, the hunky looking Phillips lid. And I rounded the edges here, it was very square, and I did put black around the edge here. What we're going to do inside this guitar is the second phase here, because that is the electronic tone. Um, everything from the 250, and I'm also going to go do a test on different capacitors on the tone. And I'm anxious to see what these mini humbuckers sound like. So right now, our next step is for me to get this ready, to put strings on, to play it like this, like an acoustic, and let's see if we're getting a good, solid, uh, resonating and tone out of this before we move on to the electronics. Here's an update. Um, we've um, filed the nut. We're all set up here. It's looking good. Down here, very important, we need to fit the new bridge to the body. First thing I do is I put a clean sheet of paper down with a low-tack tape so that um, the sandpaper doesn't chafe the finish. Then I turn the sandpaper upside down and I tape it down. And I've already measured the um, scale length. It's 30 and a half inches. So I know the general location where the bridge needs to go. So what I'm going to do, and I know that it's right in this area. This is going to take a little bit of time, but this is how we fit the bridge. I'm going to have to sand the bottom of this till it contours so that it's laying absolutely flat on the body. And that gives us our best tone transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The tailpiece, I want to point this out to you. When you install one of these tailpieces, I try to find, well you have to find, the center line and usually on a, a split um, wood like this. And if it lines up with the center dots on the neck and everything lines up, I line up the center piece of the uh, tailpiece. And then I install just the one screw. And the reason you want to do that, you'll notice that on the Hoffners there's a nail. Sometimes I'll use a really thin screw and a nail. You don't want to put those in yet because when you start loading and putting tension on the neck, you want this to find its own center. And if you look, if watch right here where these little tabs are where the nails go, um, you can see how that moves up and down. So what I do is I let it find its own center, and then I will bend those tabs, tap them so that they lay down on the body before I put the nail in. If you don't bend them and you put the nail in, it has a tendency to make this go crooked. Because, you know, you, it wasn't flush to the body, and then you nail it down, and it, it wants to steer it. So, center, screw, only until it's on, it's taken a set, and it's centered itself. Okay, I've got the strings on, and what's going on now is because I had leveled the neck to do the frets, now that I have tension on the neck, I have to readjust the neck, and I've been, it takes a little while to do as it takes a set. But so far, um, I think it's sounding great. Um, you know, let me just kind of give you, I don't know how this mic here is going to sound here, but acoustically, with no electronics, um, using these as sound holes here, I'm real happy with it. Oh. I like it. I like it. I just want to give you a close up of it and then I'll plug it in and give you a little sound test. You know, we we replaced the tailpiece with a um, Hoffner. This happens to be a club or anything after 1965, 66, 7 up. This is the shorter tailpiece. I put a uh, Hoffner bridge in here. I um, did use some Hoffner knobs here on the end for the volumes and tone. And inside I did a little electrical work. We'll talk about that when we get over on the bench. We leveled and crowned the um, neck 
and as you see up here I um, switched out the um, hollowed out nut for a solid one and um, readjusted everything and of course I took the big heavy tuners off and put these rugby ball Hofner tuners on. So let's take it over on the bench. I'll give you a close up of everything and then we'll do a little bit of a sound test here. Here we are. It's a beautiful guitar. Very good quality for the um, Epiphone series at that price range. I just want to show you some of the things I just spoke about. You can see I've changed all this up. Volume, volume, tone. No more copy. Um, again, what we changed down here, flat wound, labella, deep talking strings. I've adjusted the pickup to the height that I think uh, makes most sense for the sound on this. We leveled and crowned the um, neck, oiled the neck. I did take viola off of here. And again, I have the Hofner rugby ball tuners on here. It's a great bass. It is what it is for its price range. I like the quality. The only thing I can say about it is I'm not too crazy about the color red. I wish this was more brown. Here's a close-up shot. I'm going to play this. A lot of stuff in my shop here rattling, but let's just see how this goes. <laughs> sound it's a little different it's nice to have something in the arsenal that's a little different you know it reminds me a little bit of an EB2 I had a 67 very 60s uh, early 70s type sound I really pleased with what we did here and I think it's a great guitar thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one bye